So in this video we're going to look at layers, text and dimensions. So last week we had a brief look at layers, so we're just going to show you an example of how it actually worked during this video. So we see here, if you open up this file on Brightspace, it's floor plan sample, it should be on Brightspace. So you can see here, this is a standard floor plan of a multi-roomed house. We have our internal walls, our doors and our windows and our external walls. And just to have a quick show how the layers work, if you click on the little layers tab, you'll see all the different layers. We have door, external wall, internal wall, stairs, and window. And we have this little light bulb beside them. And this little light bulb is actually handy because you can turn layers off. So say if you want to show a drawing, but you only want to show certain details, you can turn things off. So if you didn't want to show the internal walls, you can just click on the light bulb and they'll all disappear. If you didn't want to show the, the doors, you can turn them off. Or if you want to get rid of the stairs, you can turn that off. And the same, actually no, this is a good point here. You can turn the current layer off. So if you see actually, I'm currently active on the stairs. So if you try and turn the layer off that you're actually, that is active, then you'll have a get, it'll come up with an error. So it's always good to change it before you try and turn the layer off. But I'll go back, I'm on now on layer zero. So now I can turn on and off the stairs, handy enough. And again, windows turn them on and off. So this is good actually, save lots of information about kind of mechanical, electrical, plumbing and structural details. And you don't need to show them all. Say so the structural engineer doesn't need to see where all the electric sockets are. You can turn, turn off them or the same with the water pipes or the plumbers don't need to see all the where the foundations and the structural columns are, you can turn them off, for example. So it's just a useful way to help clear up a drawing. The next thing we can do to improve this drawing is to add a bit of text. So obviously we have these kind of four or five rooms here, and but we don't know which room is which, which is a bedroom, which is a living room, for example. So this is where actually we do a bit of thing called annotation. So this is going to add text, and then we're later going to add dimensions. So this is our text option up here, this is our dimensions, but again, as with, all other components of a drawing, we're going to add, a, add these things on our own new layer. So if you click into the layer properties, click them up here. So we're going to create a new layer called text, capital T, and then we're going to give that a color red. And then later on, we're going to create a, a layer for dimensions, and that's going to be red as well. It's all, always a good idea to keep the text and dimensions similar color. And we'll just double click on this little sheet of paper and then the little tick appears. That means now the text uh, layer is now active. So everything we, everything we draw now will be on the text layer. So if we go up to the text option up here, if you click a little drop down menu, we have multi-line text and single line text. I recommend using multi-line text for the drawings we're gonna be doing during this module, but I'll, we'll just go through single line text as just nice and quick. So we'll click on single line text. So it says, if you look at the command line, it tells you exactly what you need to do. So specify the start point of your text. So we're just gonna put some text into this place here. And it says, specify the height. Now for some reason, our height is coming up as a default of 3990, um, which is actually gonna be quite big. So if you think about this room, this room is probably like four meters by five meters, let's say. And if this is 3990, that's nearly four meters. So the text will actually be needed the height of the room. So this is obviously gonna be fairly, much too big. So this is where you have to, come to, have to play around your drawing a little bit in the text size. Um, but I know from doing this before, this I know this wall is about 200 mil thick. So I'm going to go for maybe a text height of 300 mil. And rotation angle, that's just what angle of text can be rotated. We, want, we don't want that, so we'll just leave it at zero. And now you'll see a little option comes up, start putting text in. So I'm going to put in bedroom, and we'll just put the number one, because it's the first bedroom here. Now, I'll just click out of this. So now actually the difference is where, oh sorry, let's press escape just to cancel the command. So now we have our bedroom one. But now when you saw on single line text, the difference between single line text and multi-line text, when we write in single line text and we hit enter, it'll go down to the next line automatically. But the two lines of text will be separate entities. So technically I could delete this bedroom and leave the one there or vice versa. So this is fine if you don't do single bits of text, but in a way, I think the multi-line text is quite good. So we'll just use this one again. We'll do the same thing again, just with multi-line text. So it's gonna select these two and delete. So we go up here, select multi-line text, click in here, and it says specify your opposite corner or height. So we're gonna specify the height first of all, if you haven't specified it before. So we're gonna set it at 300. And then we'll just set the area. It says specify the opposite corner. This is just the area where their text should be roughly placed. And now we're gonna call this bedroom one, actually I'll just bedroom, we we'll enter and press one again. And as you can see now, these actually, in single line text, these two, the two lines are actually two separate text entities, but now they're actually gonna be one single entity. So I click out of it, 
you'll see the text it's all this one so it's just easier to edit it and so it's just fine because when you're doing lists and lots of details especially in engineering drawings it might be lots and lots of text you need to put in so it's just kind of good to use multi-line text so we'll just double click on this text again and you'll see actually on the ribbon when you select the text the ribbon changes into almost something like you'll see in microsoft word so we have things where you can actually change the font um, you can make it bold, italic, underlined, you can change the size, you can change the text style. So there's lots of different things you can do. So this way, you can, there's much more, I think it's just much more apps you could do with multi-line text. So what I'm going to do just to clear this up, I'm going to bring this one back up onto the single line, just to make it a bit more neater looking and click out a bit. And it's always good to kind of maybe position the text in a nice central position. So we'll just put it down there, roughly central. So now what we have to do, we have to put the same thing in each of these rooms here. So now we could go along and actually just select text and just do the same thing over and over again. But because we know we've already done it once, well, a quick way to do it is actually if we just copy that text. So if we bring up the copy command up the top here, select our text. It's asking us to select our objects down here. So we have selected the text. So just hit enter to confirm we've selected everything. Then specify our base point. That's the point at which we're going to move the text. So just going to click center the word. And then we can just drag it around and position it more or less centered in each of the rooms. Like this and we'll just put one in the hall here so now obviously they're all not bedroom number one but again all you have to do to change text is double click on it and then you can highlight it and we'll just rename them whatever you want to do so we'll call this one bedroom two and we'll click into this one this can be living room this one here can be dining room And this one here can be kitchen. And for this one here, we can call it hall. Now you could put something in here. This could be like the toilet and this or WCs. It usually is kind of what you do for drawings because it's a bit smaller, you can fit it in better. And then you could put like this storeroom here. So you know, just it's a nice and quick way to put the highlight the rooms in which they are. So this is going to use multi-line text. So again, in the exercise we're going to be doing for me, just use the multi-line text. It's just easier, I think. So you can see just from adding this text, now the drawing is actually coming a bit more detailed. So now we know which room. So we see from adding a bit of text to the drawings, that, that just adds a lot more detail. So when people come and look at the floor plans, they'll know what room is which. So it just makes the, the drawing a bit more detailed. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add some dimensions. Again, like we did with text, we're gonna create our new layer for dimensions. So we go to the layer properties. And we click on the little icon here. We're gonna call a new dimension, a new layer, sorry, dimensions. And it's gonna be red as well. I'm just gonna double click on it to activate it. And we close this down. So now we have our dimensions. So what we do now, all the dimensions can be drawn on the dimension on dimension layer. So again, we click on layer, we have different types of dimensions. For this one, we're gonna use linear because we're just gonna be getting the dimensions kind of horizontal and vertical in the floor plan. But if you had something, it had little rooms that were at a, aligned at a slight angle you could use these ones here and again if you can if you need to get an angle or the length of a lark and, and so on and so forth you can use the rest of them but for most of this ones here we're going to just use the linear so the first thing we have to do is actually just change the dimension style so if you type in dim style on the keyboard it'll bring up our dimension so this is actually a style i did earlier so what we're going to do is you might not have the my style one but what we'll do here now we'll just create a new one for ourselves for this drawing so click on new and we'll start with the standard and we're going to call it you can put in your initials so i'm going to call this one dt style click continue and then it'll bring up the option so in dimension style you can actually edit it quite a lot to make it suit so architectural companies and engineering companies might have their own dimension style that suits their own look of the drawing so that everyone just, just have, it's almost like their own branding so you can spend a lot of time kind of changing the look of your dimensions but you know we don't need to go too much into this one. We'll just change enough just to get this drawing looking well. So the only thing I want to do, we're going to change the arrow size. So we know that our text in the drawing here was 300 millimeters high. So our arrow size in this one is going to be, we'll set to 300 because that's roughly about right. We're going to leave the arrow's head as closed like this. Then we go into the text tab up the top. We're going to change the text height to 300 as well because we know that text in this one here was about 300, so we leave the same. And the offset from dim line, that's just basically how far the text is away from the dimension line. We'll set that to 50, just to give a bit of space. And what else are we gonna go? If we go with this, if we go to primary units, 
So we can see our precision is getting the four decimal places, but because we're drawing in meters in millimeters, we don't need four decimal places because we need to go to, if we go down to the nearest millimeter, that's all we need. So we'll just set this to zero. So now we'll see our dimensionals come up just in millimeters. So click OK. We don't need to look at anything else for the moment. So click OK. Then that's the DT style. We will set that current and close it. So now what we can do, we can go to the rooms or we can go to the dimensions. Click on linear, and all we have to do now is make sure your object snap is turned on. So if it's not turned on, if you're hovering over the wall and you don't get these little green markers showing up, just press F3 on the keyboard, that'll turn your object snap on. So it's going to click on the line in the internal wall and click on the line down here. And you'll see it shows up as 4 meters exactly. So and bring it again. So because we use that dimension style or dimension command last, we just hit spacebar. And that'll bring up the, the command again. And we'll just do a horizontal one here. And there we go. So it's 4.25 meters wide and 4 meters wide this way. And we, want, we might just move the text a little bit because it's kind of a bit on top of the dimension. So select the text, click on the move icon, and just bring it over here a little bit. So then we have our room. We have a lot more detail. All of a sudden now our drawing is getting a lot more detailed. We know what the ID of the room it is. So we know it's a bedroom and we know the exact dimensions. So again, what I want you to do now is actually to go into all the other rooms and insert dimensions. So insert the dimensions going this way and the ones going this way. Do that for the bedroom two, living room, dining room, and kitchen. You can leave the hall for the moment. So if you do these four or five rooms, you should basically have the hang of it. Inserting dimensions in any drawings, basically that's all it is. Set the dimension style, make sure the text and the arrows are everything at the right size, and then just click on the lines and insert the dimensions. Again, very simple thing to do, but it's always essential in engineering. Because obviously these drawings are gonna be going out to building sites, the builders are going to use them, so they need to be accurate and exactly right. So if the information is right on the page, it's more than likely going to be built correctly on site. So go ahead and insert dimensions in each of these rooms. And then once you have all the dimensions on, what you can do then, you can see just to, again, play with the layers again. We click a little drop-down menu here for dimensions. We'll just click on our, I'm just going to put myself onto the zero layer. So once we're on the zero layer, now we can actually turn off the dimensions if you want. So say if you had all the dimensions up there, it's probably going to look a bit a little bit cluttered slightly so say if you want to turn them off you click on the light bulb and the dimensions just disappear and turn them back on again they can turn on and off so again dimensions are on their own layer as is a text that we put on a second ago so again just putting things in the layer just gives us a bit of control over what is going to be shown in the drawings so it just depends on who's looking at drawings they might not need all the information that's on it so again I always put everything on drawings so just gives us that bit of control and go ahead and put the dimensions and the text and everything into this drawing and then you can work on then the final exercise. It should be on Brightspace. Okay, thank you.